Well, it's Tuesday again, so I'm I'm back. Today, I'm I'm going to do something um, which is a little bit more detailed, um, lengthy probably, and I'm hoping I I don't lose you people along the way. But what I want you to think about is your favorite plant. Now, this could be a house plant. It could be anything, something in your garden or something out there that you pass by and love. I want you to think about it because what I'm going to talk about today is um, vascular plants in general. And, and that goes from, you know, a blade of grass up to a giant sequoia. So everything is included and they're green. And that's the most important thing that I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to first look at the structure of a generalized plant, uh, again, from a blade of grass to a giant sequoia. The first thing is I'm going to start at the bottom, and that's the roots. Now, roots, most people don't see because they're in the ground. But they have a very important function for the plant. Um, they're there to uptake water and minerals that are in the soil and then bring them up through the trunk or the stem. And the stem is there as both structure to hold the plant upright. But at the same time, it contains the plumbing system for the plant. And, 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 and it's actually amazing. Uh, like even on Bow Bears Island, uh, we have these fairly large white pines. And then when you get into something like a giant sequoia or redwood or anything like that, these tr trees and, and plants, all of them, are pumping these minerals and water from the roots up. And it's an amazing thing where they can pump hundreds of liters of water per day. I mean, we, we tend to look at them kind of doing nothing, but they're doing a lot. So that, that's just the, and with, what they're doing with, with the stems is that the water and minerals are pushed up. But when you get to the top, you have your leaves. And I'll get into this, but what's happening is what the leaves are doing is then brought down in through the stem back into the roots. So it's a really a circulatory system, very akin to what you would think of as from us, uh, our blood system. We have veins and arteries and capillaries and everything is just circulating what's going on. Plants are doing the same thing. Now, many plants, not all, uh, have flowers. Um, we tend to look at flowers from a more aesthetic point of view maybe, but Evolutionary wise, they are there for reproduction. They're there to get the job done so that there's another generation and the species continues. That's the main function of a flower. Then there's the leaf. And, and I'm really going to try to look at the leaf today because for me at least, and other people may feel different, I feel the leaf is the most important part of the plant because that's where the food production is. Now, all of these things taken together are for survival. That's how a plant from a blade of grass to a giant redwood survives. But it's in those leaves or needles or however the plant is constructed that that food production takes place. And they're making the energy so that the roots can function, the stems can function, the flowers can function, and the next generation can function. So I want to look at that leaf. Now, I'm going to go back a little to first organisms. Um, there's no clear date as to when life started on Earth, but it's certainly over three billion years ago. And possibly even closer to four, but somewhere in there, life started. Not life as we understand it, but living things. And 
the first ones were probably what's called chemotrophs. And what it is, is that they, if you will, ate um, chemicals. And the chemicals, like modern plants, were CO2, that's one. But some ingested methane, some hydrogen, some iron, sulfur, ammonia. Um, I know this sounds strange, but when I, I, I was out in Yellowstone a number of times uh, down in Wyoming, um, and there, of course, it's a hot spot, probably the biggest one on earth. And yet all of this bacteria, these are the chemotrophs, the, this bacteria and stuff is lying in these pools, feeding off of all of this stuff that's coming up from this massive volcano. And you see this today in the ocean with hydrothermic uh, vents. And, and, and you, you just see them, and all of this stuff is pouring out and all of these little things are eating. And it's amazing because the colors that you see at Yellowstone, which are blue, orange, green, um, all of these are the chemical reactions which this bacteria and stuff interacting with these chemicals produces. Um, that's a long time ago, but it's still going on. Now, somewhere after that, um, you had these, what are called uh, prokaryotic cells. Now, the, we still have them with us. Uh, they did not disappear. What, what distinguishes them, though, really, is there's no nucleus. So they're a living entity, but no central command, if you will. You know, where we have a brain, that's our central command. The nucleus in a cell kind of functions the same way. It keeps all the system going. These don't have it, very simple, but they've been around a long time, they know how to survive. Um, from there, you're getting more and more, say, like into bacteria and stuff, and early bacteria um, that we're aware of um, is uh, stromatolites, and they are still with us. Uh, Shark Bay in Australia is very productive in, in this stuff. Basically, they're slime. They're mats, um, micro mats. Um, I also have seen them, by the way, in St. John, New Brunswick, um, at Fort Howe and a couple other places that I found. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're gonna pass them by, but they're there, trust me. Which shows that we've been around a long time. Um, after stromatolites and things like that, it, uh, and I'm going through evolution real quick here, um, the prokaryotic cells became eukaryotic cells, and that is basically a cell with a nucleus. Now, the interesting thing about the nucleus is parts of it, which I'm going to get into, parts of it were independent living cells. And this is called symbiosis. Um, there are a lot of different theories on it. Um, some are two cells decided to cooperate. Um, another theory is um, one cell was going to eat the other cell and decided not to. And then they worked out an arrangement. We don't know. 